Yo, 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 Mallory Bros Podcast, episode 79. This is going to be the CPU episode. I don't know if y'all know, but in 1979, um, that was the uh, the year they invented the personal computer. Dope. Do you know what we would do without computers? And you know what? Man, if we this nigga made it seem like he had some cool ass shit to say. That's not for 79. This nigga said the CPU episode. The CPU what are we, episode. fucking nerds? Guess what? You ugly ass motherfuckers that click this podcast, what'd you click it on? CPU episode. Look, a phone. And what is that? A phone. It's a CPU. You dumb nigga. <laughs> oh, you from Baltimore? CPU! CPU! <laughs> CPU! CPU! Y'all, ain't, y'all ain't looking at y'all CPU. Look, let me tell you, for real. Your phone is a, is a computer. And look, you know what? This will be the first episode that we start smacking the tech corner. What up? Oh, you want to start in Tech Corner? All right, bet. Yeah, yeah let's, for the CPU let's, let's get that bullshit out of the way. Look, this is just some fun <laughs> facts for y'all because for real, for real, I didn't have a whole bunch of um, like actual like article type things. The only thing that all I right. did have was uh, Google is giving all of its employees a worldwide sixteen hundred dollar bonus check right before the Love holiday. It. How dope is that? Love it. If you work for Google, yo, let me get like two hundred. They take trying to get some y'all. last minute gifts. You know that's great, even for the people that work in the little Google shops. Yeah. What if you just sell Chromecast all day? That's what I'm saying. Like. If that's you, dope. like, I'm just saying, like, that's how you look out for your folks, your folks. And a lot of that had to do with the pandemic and coronavirus layoffs and a lot of shit. So for real, for real, some people feel like, you know how to us, it'll look good. But for them, they feel like it's about damn time. You so, right. yep. you never know. Uh, I don't know if y'all noticed, I'm going to just spit some fun facts to y'all. Some facts that I looked up and I thought were interesting. Uh, and they're tech facts. The first one being that. Music content makes up five percent of of all YouTube's content. So if you get on YouTube and you look at any any type of content, whether it's uh, you look at movies on there, you might look at funny videos, you might look at fail videos, you might look at, at like vlogs and podcasts. Everything on YouTube all combined, uh, music only makes up five percent of that. But they account for twenty percent of YouTube's views, which I feel like is dope. Five percent of the content on YouTube. Is music. Is music. However, it makes up for twenty percent of all of their views. Oh, okay. Yeah. That's so actually yeah. crazy. Oh, okay. Yeah. Uh, I'll let y'all dissect that. Um. Uh, I don't know if you knew this, Terrell. Samsung started as a grocery store in 1938, mm-hmm. bro. Yeah, 1938. They sold fish, uh, primarily, and yeah. Come You're, on, bro. Hey, you, do you know who you're talking to? Right. He think he he thinks he's a G. Come on, man. I used to train motherfuckers on look. Apple was founded in 1976. That's 38 years later. I just thought it was funny how they were... Samsung started in 1938, and their biggest competition was Apple. 38 years later. No <laughs> I don't know why I think that's just And, and you funny. know what else? We played 38 Baby to start the podcast. We played 38 Baby to start the podcast. That's crazy. You see how the world works? In the universe, yeah. That's crazy. Because I would look. Samsung is 38 years older than Apple. Well, 38 years in a month. That's crazy oh, yeah. we started with 38 Baby. Anyway, yeah. <laughs> uh, I don't know if y'all know this, but every Apple advertisement that you see where they show a phone, the time is 941. Because believe it or not, that's the same time that they announced the actual iPhone in 2007. Uh, Steve Jobs said, this is the iPhone. And it was 941. If you go to Apple.com and you find a phone pick where they show the time, the time is going to be 941. Because what? the event actually started at 9 o'clock. It was a 41-minute presentation that led up to the reveal of the iPhone that apparently went perfect. Uh, and if you, if you actually go back and look at the iPhone launch, when they launched the very first iPhone, uh, you can see on the screen that it, that it was 941. And don't y'all think that's crazy? I think that's crazy to me. Apple's event where they launched the first iPhone um, was launched at 9 a.m., so the event started at 9. Okay. okay. Uh, it was 2007. So, yeah, okay. That's not 2009, though, so you can't say there's nothing 9 about that. But what's 2 plus 7? Okay. 9. Right? Sure. Do you know that this was... Do you know that this the, the iPhone was unveiled on the 9th of... Like, what was it? September 9th? Search iPhone launch day. Or iPhone reveal. First iPhone? First iPhone reveal or something like that. All right, we'll see if the nigga's right. 
I hate that this nigga's typing. Sorry, y'all. Dude, nigga, you uh, don't you don't have any etiquette. You could you should. Which day was it? It was two thousand seven. January the 9th. January 9th. All right. Yeah. Oh, dope. So not only was it January 9th, the, the event started at 9. The yeah. 9th at 9, 941. Mm-hmm. 2007. 2007. You're, y'all know how long ago 2007 was? 14 years. And it's the last month. The last month ah. in this 14th year. So Jeez. I only bring that up to say, especially the, uh, the Apple being founded in 1976 and uh, Samsung starting in 1938. For anybody that's starting anything... You could be Samsung, where you starting as something that is completely different than what you're going to end up being. That's right. You know? So just keep grinding because you never know what you're going to elevate to. Yep. You might not be green when you elevate. You might be red. It doesn't matter where you start. It's how you finish. Or you might be Apple, where you're just going to jump out the gate, and if you stay true to what you're doing, that shit's going to blossom into something great. The people that hate on you, they're going to be the motherfuckers that thought that they've been here doing it. They've been here 30-something years more than you. But guess what? You're their biggest fucking competition, and when they run the numbers, you're right there with them. Right. So, uh, just a good little fun yeah, fact sure. just to run into the, the episode. I thought it was dope. Shout out to the tech corner. We growing. The last thing I'll tell y'all, they are coming up with laws for kill switches for robots. Why would they even need that? Because they know the motherfuckers about to turn red chested and start. Why killing they even? Everybody. Why are we even discussing this, y'all? <laughs> Dead ass though. They said, all right, bet if y'all make a robot, we need a kill switch. Where all of them die at once. Nah, you could just hit the kill switch on one robot. What if he be like, you just kill switch my man? Like if you got two robots. Yeah, ew, motherfucker. That motherfucker, you know how you start, you know how people be talking about their technology? <laughs> Fucking piece of shit. <laughs> what if them joints develop feelings? You're right. Yeah, and the other robot be like, oh, chill out. <laughs> Sir, uh, you're, yeah. Calm your ass down. <laughs> <laughs> you looking at that motherfucker like, what you gonna say? Uh, what's the kill switch word? <laughs> Down or defuse. <laughs> Stand back. <laughs> Sit. Shut down, I said. <laughs> Fuck you, nigga. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Crazy. But yeah, y'all. Shout out to the tech corner. We turning up. This nigga came with a fat corner. Fat corner. Trey, you a hater. Y'all see how he's sitting here dressed? This nigga look like he plays for the golf team, but the grass, okay, the, boy, the grass like, team. Okay, who you look like? You look like you work at a deli. You look like you, all, you know, you look like you, you look like a nigga that work at a gas station. This all nigga you do is, is put dress- twenty on five and get and sell niggas gas station rhino pills all day. I don't know if y'all can see him, but he's just dressed like outside. Like, how do you look like you're just something that is uh something tree? Tense. This nigga's look hat. Like look at his hat. You you got the same hat the nigga was wearing in the uh <laughs> the Wizard of Oz, boy. You got the same hat as the the uh, Michael Jackson was wearing as the what's the name man? What was that? Okay, boy, you look like you you like you you like a nigga that walk around. You tell people you was in the wire, but your role was crackhead. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right, man, how we rocking? How we where we at? I was gonna start with the uh, the Drake and Kanye thing was the the biggest thing on that fucking Friday that yeah. we never got a chance to really talk about. You know, people know you a big Kanye fan. Nah, you know what? Well, you know what you start with. Uh, when was it? When did we drop? When did you drop? That's that was on dropped. like Sunday. When did, we, when did the damn documentary drop? Sunday night. Sunday night. So, Sunday night. Uh, so, we fuck finally, Kanye and Drake. Yeah. Sunday night, we released uh, a damn documentary done by my good, my good man right here. And I just wanted to start with that because I felt like, for real, for real, you did a great ass job, bro. I Appreciate feel like it. everybody can admit, if you saw it, it's just a great ass video. Like, for real, for real, I knew Terrell was cooking. But I didn't know he was cooking like yeah, that. Nigga like, was, he was trying to rush me. And I was like, bro, this is not something to be rushed. Y'all know I worked on that joint for like a month and a half. When I announced that joint, I hadn't even really started all the way yet. I was just like, yo, yeah. I finally got that in the works. But I was I was still putting everything together. So I'm glad that everybody's enjoying it. I think uh, if you don't have the Patreon, it is well worth, even if you get it just so you can see that, because that is going to be a Patreon exclusive. It's specifically... Uh, Exclusive content, so you got to watch it exclusively, but it is so fucking dope. I thought it was great. And I, and I told him, like, for real, for real, a lot of people might think that it's just a regular video, but it's really not. Like, it's really a yeah. well-put-together video. It's an hour long. It's like a legit documentary. Could be sold as a documentary, for sure. 100%. And that's, yeah. why, that's why I wanted to make sure we labeled it as that. I didn't want people to think that it's a, a damn review. Yeah. It's just, it's just damn broken down like you haven't seen. Respect to Dissect Podcast. Respect to... 
um, our thoughts, respect to Genius, all the other people that broke it That's down. Um, cause they kind of laid the path, but this is damn broken down like you never seen it. So, um, yeah. And I respect everybody's opinion. Like, yeah, if you don't think Damn is Kendrick's best album, I'll yeah. tell you two things. Number one, you're entitled to your own opinion. Because, number one, if you're going to tell me Tim Hipper Butterfly or Good Kid Mad City, what am I say? No. Right. Those are fucking great albums. Number two, ask Kendrick what his best album is. He'll tell you Damn. Said it on Big Boy Radio. <laughs> Bitch ass niggas. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, but, yeah, man. So that was, um, that was great. It's still up there. Go see it. Yeah. Uh, tweet me. Let me know what you think. Cause I've been retweeting everybody. So mm-hmm. I don't know if you had anything. Oh, you wanted to start with the Kanye and Drake. Okay, I did yeah. think people want to know what we thought about that Kanye and Drake. So we definitely oh, yeah, have to talk about that. Um, I thought it was dope. I thought it was cool. I, it, this is. Let's just get to the shit. Oh wait, give c- contact. Kanye and Drake did a show for Larry Hoover. Um, everybody, it was on Am- it streamed on Amazon. Mm-hmm. So it was. So I don't like to give context. Biggest thing for Friday because at, at this point. You know that it's the fucking Kanye show. But maybe you don't, you know? Maybe you don't. So you're right. Thank you. But they listen. said that it was a, people who was 40 years old listening to this. Some I know some 25-year-olds that was tuned out and had to wake up and say, what? Yeah, no boy. 40 years old olds ain't getting up and getting on Twitter. And I don't know That's if they true. put it on the news. They woke up and saw coronavirus and Omicron. <laughs> no. <laughs> oh, shit. <laughs> so, yeah, they, they did a uh, show. It was for Larry, uh, for Larry Hoover. It's a free Larry Hoover concert. And... Let's just get to the shit. Oh, yeah, for sure. This was not a versus. Terrence Whoa. and all of the Twitter people made it a versus. It is a Kanye West show. I'm going to let Terrell control the narrative. We mark, it was marketed it, it was, well, I marketed it. It was marketed as a Kanye show with special guest Drake. Everybody, of course, the intentions were high between the two artists. Everybody wants them to do a versus so bad that they haven't done. So they tried to make this a versus event, but it really was not a versus. And I felt like everybody on Twitter was forcing it, trying to say, yo, he's getting his boot smoke. It was like, yo, are y'all watching this? Are we watching the same? Why are y'all watching this way? Why are y'all doing this? It's really not that way. Do I agree that Drake played a trash ass set list? Yes. But it was not a versus. I don't think Drake lost. Mm -hmm. I think Kanye had a great show featuring Drake who didn't have the best shit, but it wasn't really a versus. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I think you, you, yeah, yeah. I think people don't realize that, like I was telling Terrell, we had 35 versus events since the start of versus, which was back in 2020. 35? There's been 35 plus events. 35. That got to be including all of the game and shit. That's in include, the- that's every versus event so far. Okay. You know what I'm saying? Since 2020. So we we as an audience, a viewing audience, that is now essentially like a stage that is a a setting that artists have stepped into and we've seen all year and it's for real for real one of the only things that we really have for real besides other like think about versus is something that we can look forward to artists doing that's outside of music awards and stuff like that Mm -hmm. so seeing two artists step on the stage drake and kanye knowing their beef knowing their history i will i will admit even when kanye started First, let me just say on a side part, just to kind of like bevy away from that for a minute, the set design and the way it looked, like the way that they did that, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, fire. The Coliseum, it just looked amazing. Like that was amazing. The pictures look amazing. I just, I could sit on a website and click through images all day just looking at that. Mm-hmm. So, and I think Kanye's performance and Drake's performances were just both epic. When Drake did 24, my goodness, he just shows like he's like an R and B king, bro. But in the in the terms of the verses, I think because they was both on stage and Kanye started with his old shit, I thought he was about to get up there and do Donda. I wanted to. I thought he was going to do off. We off the grid, grid. He didn't even do that. Yeah. I'm like, oh, he's doing his old shit. So it's not even that we needed Drizzy to come with a whole set list of of old shit, but for him to be doing all his old shit. And you literally don't do a song past 2019. It was like, why? I, I, we, it was just kind of confusing. I think the only reason why people started thinking verses is because Kanye was playing his hits in the same way we've seen 35 different people start an event. I come out, y'all know what's popping. I'm playing my shit. And Kanye been talking big shit. Even said 
on Drink Champs that he would do a versus with Drake. And we kept saying, like, damn, uh-oh. Well, maybe this is the versus, but they're going to do it in their own way. I actually thought the event would have been better if he did his old shit and Drake came and did his old shit. That would have made for an epic event. And then you let the people decide. But Drizzy went up there and did God's plan. Which was really? fit, it was fitting for... Man, I guess. But it just... If you watched it and you didn't it was a think great, about Versus, you enjoyed it way more. I am about to say, I enjoyed it regardless. I, I'm just saying the only reason why we were like, hmm, is this Versus? And we were disappointed by Drake's set list mm -hmm. is because you can't have Ye up there playing his old hits and then just have Drizzy go up there and not play nothing and we know he has hits? You can't but do that. But y'all people... And this is the thing that kills me about people that act like they've never seen an artist do a concert. When an artist does a concert... They play some new shit. They play old shit from their catalog because it is their concert. And so if this was a Drake concert featuring, let's say, if it was a Drake concert featuring, uh, let me see if somebody who got something that's out right now. Let's, think of, let's say if it was a Drake concert featuring Ye. Right. Ye would probably come out and perform Praise God. Um he might do some shit from Donda. He might do a track from a couple years ago. Man, I don't care what y'all say. He's not going to come out there and give you Can't Tell Me Nothing and a bunch of different tracks because it's real, not but, your concert. But I don't think Kanye... That was not a Kanye West... It It was a that Kanye was show. Not a, it was, but like... All right, man. Put it like this. When they announced that it was going to be Drizzy and Kanye, it doesn't even make any sense. You can't even explain to me now. It doesn't make sense for Kanye to be playing all every single one of his golden hits and Drake plays nothing old. It's like, I get it, it's Kanye's thing, but like it just seemed like why Drake, why Drake's set list was so bad it had everybody thinking like that. Like, mm -hmm. and I think it's proof that Drake is also too big for that. It, that was proof. But don't you don't Drake think that is goes too into big it? for that think seat. about it. You didn't fit at all. We was just like, damn, you 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 better than that. Well, you gotta think about it. This is what people and this, this was another thought. Was Drake not allowed to play old songs? <laughs> I don't know. Think? What I was gonna say is maybe you yeah, this is the thing that I was gonna if Drake was to play some old shit, he go out there and play. Like I do agree, like when he played Don't Say You Will, I thought Drake was gonna get in to say what's real. That would have been dope. Yeah. I was so hyped for that. And I was like, bet. They want to do some trade off -y type shit. But I think uh, Drake has the ability to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with Ye, even though I think Ye would win the verses. You know what I'm saying? Well, Just honey. because if you listen to, like, you heard it, his shit, it's tough to beat that shit that he played. Nah, 100, but I but, also felt like... It's just like... Drizzy Drake, shit can, can come after oh, that. It, it could be a good B. It would have been a great... And since, Drizzy still wouldn't have, I don't think, won, but it would have been a great to have Drake do his... It Classic would have been hits. great to have him do that. It just his did not hits. make sense to me. That, that should, that's the consensus that it yeah. would have been great for him to do that. One thing I did want to say is I feel like they kind of fumbled the whole free Larry Hoover thing. Like people that were there said, oh yeah, y'all missed it, but they didn't put it on the live stream, but it was a whole thing for Larry in the beginning. And I'm like, so uh, 50,000 people that got to go know about the free Larry Hoover, like right. the like the the details of his crime, I, I mean, of his trial, like of why they why this initiative is in place about him being in Supermax prison for whatever time and him serving his years. And so basically they try and get him out of Supermax. Yeah. And so there's this lawyer on Twitter that, that goes through the whole thing. But they didn't put that in the live stream. They didn't even have like pictures of him. The only Larry Hoover thing about the whole thing was on the back of Kanye's joint says free Hoover. Free, free Hoover. And then look, Drake's joint says what? Free the man them. He doesn't even say. Yeah, I feel So you. I was like, damn, I mean, like, is this shit supposed to be for Larry Hoover? Because of, trust me, everybody there doesn't give a fuck. They're just here to see Kanye and Drake. But they still had to go an opportunity to maybe to tell the world. Yo, we about doing it. this for a reason. I yeah. And then maybe they did fumble that bag. J Prince. Is the most powerful person to get that done. I feel like that's dope. You know what I'm saying? Cause you know, you know, what was I about to say though? Something about the, about the Larry Hoover thing. Was it about the fact that? Well, remember it was a live stream on Amazon. They didn't, well, they didn't yeah, put yeah. the. You don't got it. I don't got it. All right, but yeah, but Jay Prince, bro, dude is super powerful. You know him and Larry Hoover are friends. 
No, I didn't know that. Yeah, they're actually really good friends. And so the fact that he can say, oh, y'all beefing, fuck y'all beef. Y'all both about to get together and do this show. Look, <laughs> for, for <laughs> my man. Yeah, I guess. I just feel like, yeah, you're right. And I, I was one. the last thing I would say is like, I didn't really bang with the choir in the beginning. Like, a lot of people thought it went on too long. I felt like the choir was stretched. The out, the, it seemed like the event didn't start for like an hour from when it was supposed to. Then we start with like the choir. I mean, look, I appreciate the choir, but they do Lauren Hill and they do Adele new track. You know what I'm saying? Like, I do not want to hear a choir to sing the, this damn Odell track. I would, this is a Kanye West concert. I felt like that was a reach. Like, all right, bet. This is a dope choir. This is probably his choir. So they opening up the show. I just felt like, damn, I was ready for the joint to start in a different way. But, hey, some people actually love that fucking choir, so I'm not hating on it. Yeah, I mean, well, I'm just thinking, is this a part of everything Kanye now? Like, because to mm. me, that's not Kanye. That is the, what do you call it, Sunday service. They put a whole album out. I didn't think that that was a Kanye West project. That was a Sunday service project, project so. Yeah. Some people connect it to. IDK. Yeah. Well, um... I think the bad news for the past week, Saturday, we lost Demarius Thomas. Mm -hmm. um, and so it was, it was crazy how that happened because we were just sitting there. Terrence was like, Terrence just kind of said it. He didn't realize. I just showed you the joint. Yeah. Yeah, he just kind of was like, damn, bro, and showed me it. But I don't think he remembered how important Demarius Thomas was to me. Because if normally when somebody dies, and who is like, Demarius Thomas for people who don't know? Oh, if you don't know Demarius Thomas, he was a... Uh, Super Bowl 50 champion, um, Denver Bronco. He was a wide receiver. Wide receiver. And, um, yeah. And so, a, su a, a legend on our team. Literally a legend. But, um, passed he, away. he caught that big pass from Tebow against the Steelers. I don't know if anybody knows that. Yeah, to take us to play the Patriots, where we went on to whoop the Patriots as Patriots fans. Never forget. <laughs> um, but, uh, he passed away. He, um, you know, had a complex. He had a Car crash he got in 2019, and they had some complications from that that caused a string of seizures over the next couple of years, and he unfortunately had a seizure in the shower. And so they're still looking into it, but that was a huge loss. Just want to send an RIP to my guy, man. man RIP D RIP. RIP DT, fly forever, Brody. Going to be wearing that number 88 forever. And I got a Demarius Thomas, the first jersey I ever bought in my adult life, 2014. My man, Matt Baker, who's probably listening to this podcast. Shout out, Matt. Shout out to Matt. Fuck the um, Ravens. Sorry. <laughs> Matt told me, bro, I can get you a jersey if you want a Broncos jersey. Who would you get? And I was like, man, I would get Demarius Thomas because that's my guy. And I still got that jersey in my closet. If you watched the last vlog, Terrence was talking shit to me about it because I had my, my jerseys in the, uh, in the corner. So just for us to, if you look at my Broncos story on my Instagram, we just retired his number this I mean, retired his, he just retired officially this year. And we did like a celebration type thing as an organization. And the fact that, that was a happen. Like, you can't really can't predict shit. It's just fucked up. So, RP to him. And yeah. RP, yeah. I, I felt bad because in the vlog, Terrell, that's it. He said that was the only jersey that I could wear was the Demary Thomas jersey. And I was like, fuck this nigga's jersey. I don't want this bomb ass nigga. I'm saying, I've said some big wild shit. And it's just like, because you don't expect somebody the to die. Next day, the next week, he's gone. He's gone. Yeah. Cray. Yeah. So, I'm going to get that jersey framed. I'll be like, I wore this one day. Or we beat the Patriots, I hate that jersey. I mean, we won the Super Bowl, I hate that jersey on. Let's keep it 100. SZA dropped the album. Not SZA. Uh, Summer Walker dropped the album. Mm -hmm. Her dropped the album. LMA album done. And let me let you let y'all know that album's about to be fire. It's about to smoke both those albums. Straight All up. Right. The album's done. Okay. I got the real confirmation, too. Not, that, right. not that flake bullshit y'all got. Just know, LMA... About to put out one of the we'll best albums. Let's see if she does that shit, that bullshit at the end of the track. Don't worry about it. Even if she does that, th 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 let me tell you something. E. All of that shit that y'all was talking about that. Evolution. Even though that was what it was and when you had you to wait through that, it was still great music that came before that. It was, so, but that's like when SZA that's did the we bright let, idea we let the music do, the, we let the music do the talking. How about that? You Jacquees ass, copycat ass niggas, get ready. Speaking of Jacquees. We making whole niggas careers though with the music we got. For real though, keep First it niggas afloat. Jacquees definitely had a career before that. Would not have a career if 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 LMA never came out with Boot Up. That nigga wouldn't have a career. He would have he would have left. He, he would. He stayed afloat solely because of his remix, and he was able to capitalize off other shit. If he never had that remix, he was kind of quiet before then. 
He was still around though. He would have been right next to Rich. And now he doing look. Now he doing the the uh, American uh, national anthem. I know, right? In the land of the free. <laughs> 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 the funniest shit ever. Hey, look. Uh, let's get to the shits. Um, the big question of the week in uh, Chadwick Boseman, R.I.P. His brother came out. His brother Derek mm-hmm. Boseman came out and said that my brother will want his role to be recast. And so, question falls to you now. Should you think, I mean, do you think the Black Panther should be recast? And with who? I have who I think. I don't think they should recast it. I really don't think they should. I feel like if you recast it, to me, I mean, the MCU, isn't it over with? Is there a must to do these films? I mean, I thought they were going to do the movie without him and have the, the girl Shuri take the lead. And I know she's kind of like fumbling the bag because of the vaccine and all of that, but I don't know, y'all. I guess maybe they could recast it, and if they do, I got some folks in mind. I'm thinking Jonathan Majors is uh, one of the great actors that we have right now that I feel like could just jump in, but I feel like when we talk about recasting this role, we're not thinking about the African dialect that T'Challa is supposed to have. And that's not easy. That was the hard part. We had Chadwick Boseman. Y'all don't realize how great Chadwick Boseman was, maybe. But this man was a prophet. James Brown. Uh, Thurgood Marshall. Thurgood. Uh, 42. Yeah, like he he went on a string of... And it's way more than that, too. Like he could just... He was a... To me, he was a prime actor. Like he could say, oh, I need to learn uh, African dialect. Bet. Learned it. I just felt like people thought that that was gonna be Rocky too, when he uh, when he when the movie first came out, they thought that his African dialect was gonna be a little Rocky, but he actually nailed it. So I think it's easy to pick a black face and say, oh, he's black, he has short hair, let's put him in the role. But for real, for real, do we really have somebody who's gonna be able to get up there and do what Chadwick did? I know y'all think it was easy, but when you think about the fact that they have to speak with an African dialect, it's not that hard, Terrence. All right. I mean, even Chadwick said he struggled with it. Even Chadwick said he struggled with it. So, yeah, you're right. It's not that hard. You do it. Swear, man. This nigga is not even an actor. And Chadwick said it was hard. And this nigga said it's not that, not that hard. I'm saying it's so not you, that hard you to eat. find somebody else that can Terrell, do that. I'm talking about the diet. Doing, uh, all right, bet. But who? Because you ain't. Who you name? Who you, who you gonna name? That's going to replace. Yeah, you're right. We can find somebody with an African dialect. But who can we get to be Black Panther? I'm saying they're going to have to find somebody. Do they have to? First of all, since you want to talk about Chadwick, Chadwick said he will want, I mean, well, not he didn't say. His brother said that Chad, knowing, knowing his brother better than anybody, yeah. and just from what I feel like I've learned about Chadwick, he seemed like the type of guy that would be like, nah, let y'all keep it going. Get somebody else to do it in my honor. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I'm not saying they got to come and then be T'Challa, like when they recast Henry from whoever show and the next scene is a completely different actor and he just acting like nothing happened. I'm not saying do that, but maybe there's a new somebody. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I don't know who it could be. I was going to say Jonathan Majors, but Jonathan Majors is already in Loki. So he's already in the MCU. So you really can't use him. He's in, he's in the Loki show and he's slated to be in the, uh, the new Ant-Man joint. So it can't be him, but it could be somebody. But all I know is, Shuri ain't going to do it nah. because she said, fuck it. Y'all going to make me do this? I ain't doing it. So I feel like now the question becomes like, damn, who could be the next Black Panther? But I do agree. And some people were saying, oh, y'all are selfish. Just let the, the, the character die with T'Challa and Chadwick. But then people were like, yo, but the MCU is so vast that there were already plans in place for the Black Panther as a character. Mm-hmm. And so... To me, while it may seem selfish of us to want to continue to see Black Panther, think about what that did for all the young black kids and all of the, the cultures that enjoy Wakanda and just the portrayal of the Dora Milaje to see all those powerful black women. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. We should still keep that going. Yeah. That's true. In somebody. T'Challa, I mean, I'm saying T'Challa. Chadwick would probably want that too. He probably wouldn't want that momentum to stop. Yeah. I mean, let, I look, let, let Michael B. get back in. Fuck it. Uh, he manga died. Fuck it. We know why it switched. We know why he's in a different role now. <laughs> like, but what about some people are saying that uh, maybe, nah, Idris is too old. 
Ty, see, this is a, this we were talking about. You talking about Idris? We have no talent out here, or at least we don't know about it. They were saying, like, did you see the thing that you was said like Idris? Dan, did you see the thing that was like Daniel Kaluuya will be perfect for the role? He was great in Fred Hampton. <laughs> they was like, nigga, he's in the movie. <laughs> I got a whole nother character. Got a whole nother character, and honestly, he wouldn't be good for Black Panther. I'm sorry. He would be good for the role he's in in Black Panther. Who for as a copy? What about John Boyega? From uh, Star Wars. All right, yeah. He can do he it. He can do it. He's not, he got John a Nigerian Boyega background. Can he can 100% do it. Yeah. Yo, John, let me holler at you. He if you need it. that bag, hey, look, what about uh, Damson? No. Uh, no, no, no. No. You saying that like you hating or some shit. He got I'm hate in his mind. Let me just tell you. He got hate in his mind. Ever this nigga Frank. Frank. That's our nigga. I love you Frank. Damson is annoying. Frank is cool. Damson want to get online and. Fucking dance and fucking. Why you hating? It's like get the fuck off the TL, Frank. Cause you know you supposed to you be. Know the, you know the ladies mess with him. That's why. That's why he's saying. I that. am low key hating on the nigga. He hating on him. I'm low key hating because this nigga will nah, get on nah, there. Nah, look, nah, nah. We not picking dancer. Come on, and I don't be want perfect him for Black, for Panther. Black Panther. No, 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 no. He Dancing. mad because for real, for real, Damson would kill that shit. Now you know who would kill it. Uh, what's the? Cause you know what I thought. From, Chadwick oh, might not have been. Name? Was he super athletic? Damson might not be mad athletic, but you don't even gotta be athletic. They get him in shape for it. You know who need to do it? Not Mahershala Ali, but Ash. Mahershala. Mahershala could do it. Cause he Trevante a, Rhodes could do it, the nigga from Moonlight. We don't know if that nigga can get a, a African dialect. Let's not just start picking brothers because they're they're black. <laughs> Ashton Sanders can do it. He was in the equalizer too. He's a he plays. Terrell, hell he no. Plays the dude from, hell no. He plays in a Wu Tang joint, bro. He could do no, it. No, 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 no. Not be Black Panther. Come on, he's a great actor. But come on, look, Mahershal is perfect. Trevante could do it. Blade. You hated on Trevante. Mahershal is Blade. They wouldn't pick Mahershal. Trevante is a low key already ready for the role. Terrell, you're talking about his physique and how he looks. He but can, can act. he do an African dialect? Oh my God, Terrence. You act you like know how the nigga has to is. learn a new language. Do you know how important that was? He can learn the dialect. This nigga he is seen, a trained actor. This nigga haven't seen the behind the scenes, obviously. Hey, Look. you giving Chad because I, God rest the man's soul. You giving him a little too much credit. This bitch ass nigga haven't looked behind the scenes dialect. and now I'm starting to get pissed off for real. I have seen it. They was talking about how I'm talking tough. about execution. He was he did it, but the nigga was a couple as, of steps from. From right, Don and Cheeto you think this nigga the... Rhodes is going to be able to do anything because you're, you're shitting on this man and you never even Terrell, seen him try it. Terrell, we've only seen him act in roles in which he for real for real is in it because of the way he looked, not because of how he acts. Even in Moonlight, and the nigga said a couple words. We're not about to act like he's a premier actor, bro, and you need a premier actor for this role. And you think that they, that they can just be black and be strong and run around. No, you got to be the king. We what need, about, we what need about, Chadwick back. What about my man from... Uh, how to get away with murder. So we, we all for this. We all. Terrence, so who the fuck next can we you gonna say who the fuck Anthony Mackie? <laughs> Terrence, who the fuck can we recast the role with? You gonna say no to everybody. I said Damson, and that was a good choice, but since the nigga Damson was mad that Damson get, get bitches, he mad. Terrence, nah. First of all, Trayvante is a way better fit than Damson. So, we don't know if Damson's ass can do it either. What about my well, man? Well, we know from, we know Damson can we know Damson can act and switch a dialect. What about my man from All American? No, it's black he ass can can't do, do it. But you know what? He, he could do it. He looks like a panther. <laughs> 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 oh, who he don't look like oh, a panther? What about my man from uh from BMF? That was also an All American. Terrell, nobody from BMF is gonna make the cut. Terrence, the dude that All was right, in. All right, we got so and so. Y'all made it. Y'all made it. Nobody from BMF made it. Sorry, Terrence. Nah, bro. <laughs> My man from BMF, Terrell, no, what's his bro. name? Y'all no. know who I'm talking about. If you watch All American and BMF, it's the dude. His name's Da Vinci. Let me see him. My man right here. You're not. You're going to hate because he's an All American. All right. I don't know if y'all watch BMF, but I only seen this one episode. That's the one who he was like. He was. Blind, he lost it. Yeah. He was talking to the joint, and the shorty was playing him. That's no, him. No. 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 That was my man B Mick. He plays Terrence. His no, name no. is Terrence. Yeah, he plays Big Me's brother, Terrence, who goes by T. All right. I and this bitch-ass nigga not even watching the show. Nah, but you know what? I know he can't play Black Panther. He's cut. This nigga can play. My man who played, uh, my man who played, um, Lamar. If y'all don't get that bullshit out Low of here, you're not, playing, you're not playing Black Terrence, Panther. Terrence, he could do it. I know cut. he was crazy in the show, but y'all giving Chadwick way too. First of all, no, we're not. 
Chadwick has a resume. These niggas don't. We moving on. I'm sick of it. Because you're starting to be disrespectful comment, to my man Chadwick Boseman's resume. I love Chadwick. But you're you're making it seem like nobody can play Black Panther these in the niggas, MCU. It, these niggas ain't seen my Rainey. He wasn't that good in that. I'm done with this conversation. <laughs> done with it. It was because a great movie. movie. I'm done with but it. But your black so, ass was giving Terrence. I, I love. I will. I'm. Hey, look. I am let me tell you keep something. He won. He won the Oscar for that movie. We Never went to Anthony. You. We went to Anthony Hopkins' house, beat his ass, and took the Oscar. We said, "You giving it to Chad? We don't give a fuck what they said. Give us that fucking award back." Chadwick Boseman did a great job in my, my Rainey's Black Bottom. I don't think it was the best performance that year, and I don't think it was one of his best performances. I think it was elevated by his death, and that's just me keeping it on it. Let's see what, who else could have done it. We're having the same conversation now. About Ma Rainey's Black Bottom? The fact that you can't even tell me who can play Black Panther? You think you can find somebody that's going to play Ma Rainey? You might be talking Jonathan, about Denzel. Jonathan Majors was smoked that role. Better than Chadwick! Damn, that's my that's yeah, that's the that's yeah. kryptonite right there. That's right. that would be that would be his kryptonite because Jonathan Majors is great, but no, he has nothing on Chadwick. Terrence, I'm sorry. Honestly, honestly, honestly my man Michael B. Jordan enough we credit. We were robbed of the Chadwick uh Jonathan Majors duo. Right there. We were robbed, we were robbed. Yeah. Them two. I'm telling you, one of the things First that we all, love about Jonathan Majors is his emotion. And that's the only reason why I think that he'd be able to do my rainy, but then again. Bro, Chadwick, y'all go back and look at Lakeith at, Stanfield. At, at Chadwick, Lakeith Stanfield could do it. Nah, he's too Lakeith Stanfield. That's like having Will Smith be Black Panther and Will Smith is talking, and it's Will Smith. <laughs> <laughs> look, he has the mask on and he's well, Will Smith. Put, I don't know why you put Lakeith in that. Lakeith can do a bunch of. He could be tough. He could be vulnerable. He could be weak. He but, could be a bitch. Right. He could be this. He could be that. But guess what? Who he's going to always be? Lakeith Stanfield, and that's the type of actor he is. Nah. He's a Steve Buscemi type actor. He's a, what's the dude's name who was in, uh, he's in all the movies. He was even in 12 Years a Slave. Brad Pitt. White dude. Oh, but, Benedict, Benedict Cumberbatch. No, but he could, he could be in anything. He was Michael in, Fassbender. No, Terrell. Damn. You, you said him. white and in 12 Years a Slave. I gave you the two prime Look, white but dudes. he was in a very small role. He's a Steve Buscemi type. Oh, I know exactly who you're talking about. He, Paul Giamatti. Paul Giamatti. That is Lakeith Stanfield. Uh, is Terrence, like a, that's disrespect. Lakeith. You're saying that's disrespect. Like he has this immaculate. Like like he doesn't. He's not. He's great. Denzel. He's not the Denzel Chadwick. How is he not? Because they have led big roles. So has what he. movies has he led in? He's a he's a supporting guy. That's why I'm saying that. Lakeith Stanfield did great in Judas and the Black Messiah. Supporting. He. He was in, he did great in Uncut Gems. Sorry to Bother You was his lead. That was his best. Okay. He was in the movie with the girl. He the did photograph. Uh, the Issa Rae joint. He was in Uncut Gems. He was he in. He got good movies. He was in The Heart of They Fall. And he plays complete. and he was in Straight Outta Compton. He plays completely different, and dope. He plays completely different roles. Maybe it's just me, but I always see him as the same because of how his voice is. It's the same. I don't know. Did y'all see, did y'all see... Death Note, the real movie, they, they tried to make off the anime. That's the only anime I've ever seen. In 2017? Yeah. yeah. He's in that, and he plays this role as the detective, and it's just like, I can't get past this nigga being Lakeith Stanfield. He plays L? Yes. And that's a Shit. big role. That is a huge role. And honestly, that movie was horrible. Anyway. However, when I watched that, that's what made me think, all right, He's Lakeith Stanfield and everything. I'm just going to always see him as this guy right here. The only movie that I don't see him as Lakeith Stanfield is Get Out. Weird. Hey, I got a hot seat question for you. All right. Would you rather date someone you love or date somebody who loves you? So if the person that I love don't love me back, I would rather date no. someone that I love. Would you rather date someone you love or date somebody that loves you? Because, all right, bet you date somebody you love, that don't mean that they love you back. But you love them. Dang. Or would you rather not love that person that and you they date, love me. but they love you? I feel like if I love them and they don't love me back, I will still be happy at the end of the day because I love them. And I will feel you like, be happy? Yeah, because if I'm with somebody that I don't love and they love me, I'm not going to be happy. You're not going to be happy in either situation, though. But I feel like I will be happier if I at least love them. Because if you don't love me, it don't matter because I love you so much. They don't even matter if you love me or not because I love you that much on some dog shit. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. 
I'd rather date someone that I love. Yeah. Than be with somebody who loves me. Cause yeah. If you don't fuck with somebody, that's a L. And look, this is like the the last one. Would you rather be in a bad relationship for your whole life or not have a significant other for the rest of your life? I would rather can I still have flings? Yeah, that's the thing. So you could either be in a bad relationship or you could have flings, but you'll never have a... Give me the flings for the rest of your life. I can manage. Nah, fuck that. You don't get no flings. You just don't. All right, guess. All right, bet. You do get flings, but they're flings. As long as I can have flings. Y'all know why I... I said you give you have a bad relationship or you get a free porn, porn subscription for the rest of your life. This but for no... your whole life, Terrell. This for your whole life. Who Meaning, wants to be in a bad relationship their whole life, Terrence? Hell no. This is what I was going to say. This is, the, this is the reason why I ask these two questions back to back. Some of us don't realize that... Oh, I got it. You good. Keep going. Some of us don't realize that that might be our reality, bro. These, this question is loaded to me. Would you rather be in a bad relationship for your whole life or not have a significant other for the rest of your life? All right, Beth, some of y'all might hear that and, and throw an easy answer out there, but y'all know me. If we thinking about both ends of this, would you rather be in a bad relationship for your whole life? Let's stop it right there. Bad relationship, whole life. Isn't that a lot of our elders, our parents, our uncles, our aunts? Our, that seems uncle. like you ask the average old dude walking around if he's married, he going to say, yeah, like he was stuck in, in, in yeah. Like like yeah. when he got caught, like he's a dog talking about like the dog catcher or some shit. You know what I mean? Like, like the nigga, like Lakeith Stanfield and get out. Yeah. And they'll tell you, wait, you married? Man, wait. Man, don't do it. And look, this man love his wife. But look, you know what that is? That's being in a bad relationship, for real, for real, your whole life. Because the question before was what, Terrell? Would you rather date someone you love or date someone who loves you? Who knows? But guess what? That right there is the essence a lot of times of bad relationships. That what mm -hmm. that's what happened. So look, that let's, one side of the emotion, right? That was our that was our parents, y'all. If we all be honest with ourselves, if we look at our parents, are they the most perfect movie relationship couple? No, nah, most of us know our parents aren't perfect. Our parents still go through real stuff, uh, and they kind of give us that example yep. of what a relationship will be like as you age. We are leading a life of the second half of this question, which is. Not having a significant other for the rest of your life. Let me tell you, the only bad part about that is look at what our parents got from their bad relationship lifelong. They got us. Yeah. I think about how loaded our family events was with nothing but kids. With us, we want to play the business role, the invest role, the I'm invested in myself. Mm -hmm. uh, well, you, and this is what I, well, I'm going to stop you right there. Quit. The most important thing is no longer family. Yeah, you're right. You got to think about in our lineage, especially if you go back to, and I'm speaking for black folks, um, but if you go back to slavery, yeah, coming out of slavery in a new country where you have new freedom, where you're trying to build something, yeah. the most important thing and the most valuable thing we had was our ability to procreate and our ability to create life. Right. Especially even if we was to mix with the black gene being dominant, we knew we would create more, more black folks. You know right. what I'm saying? So... When you think about it, some people like you'll as when you go back, some people grandmother have six sisters. Look at Granny. Granny had nine brothers and sisters, and she was number ten. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Or she was number nine, nine, and then her little sister's number ten. It's crazy. My grandma was born ninth. Yeah. My my mother has four or five four sisters. And there's five of them of them total. Even us, it's like four of us. But as you think about it, when you're coming down these family trees and you get into our generation, right. we are the first generation. And I would say, what, what would we be? We're not Gen Z. We're uh, Generation X. We would be the millennials. We? Millennials, yeah. yeah. Um, the millennials, which is like 80-something to 90-something. Um, it's like 84 to 94, something like that. Something like that. We're the, we're the generation that started focusing on what do I have versus this family shit. Because shit, like our, our parents didn't have the greatest jobs. They didn't go mm -hmm. and do that extra whatever year in college. Yeah. And I'm not even going to see that the family thing started to change a little bit. And that's true. And I also think beside that, we also kind of get into a place where I don't know why we have this comfortability where we feel like we done with, with it. Like I, I bookmarked this girl's tweet 
earlier that I seen. She put y'all relationships are y'all relationships be so draining. I care about my peace way too much now to even go through that again. And like that is a very very popular standpoint. Mm-hmm. I don't think our parents ever were on that. Maybe we maybe they were because look, life been happening. Motherfuckers ain't changed. People are mm-hmm. people. We yeah. like brooms. You get a 30-year-old broom, a 150-year-old broom, they all work the same. It's the same thing, same use. And I think, all right, bet. People definitely took breaks. But I think now more than ever, we all about your peace being more important than, like you said, starting a family. I'm all about my yeah. peace to the point where I don't even want to get involved with anything anymore. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So, like, that just dummies me back. If God asks you this question, for real, for real, he is, y'all like. This question is me. I just asked you this question just on some would you rather shit. But when you think about it, you got a real answer that you have to have for that question, for real, for real. Mm-hmm. Everybody that would hear it. Would you rather be in a bad relationship for your whole life? Not saying that you have to get married and be in a bad relationship, but essentially a long-term marriage. There's going to be good and bad. There's good and bad. And essentially that shit's going to rot and all y'all, are, not the relationship rot. But, I think, but yeah. more often than none, it's almost like your relationship is the caterpillar that turns into the butterfly, which is y'all marriage. You know what I'm saying? But like, the caterpillar, yeah, is, is it still a caterpillar? Yeah, but it's much different. Well, well, to me, the uh, I would say it all depends on how you look at, at at your life. Some people prioritize what they want to be themselves. Yeah, people be like. I don't want to get in a relationship because I'm trying to just live my life. I want to travel. Or look, they'll say, I don't want to have kids because I want to finish school first. Right. And then live my life a little bit and then maybe take marriage or whatever serious. So if they were faced with that question, they might say, you know what, fuck it. I've been single all this time. I might as well just stay single. But then you have some people where they do want that. There's a lot of women out there now that could be, look, approaching, approaching 30 or at that 30 mark. Or, you know, even above 30 that still want that family. Or they ready for that, all right, bet. I'm ready for that husband and kids that might say, you know what? I might take that relationship if that means it comes with fruit. Yeah. And so. Yeah, man. That's a, that's a great question. That's a great ass question. I can get really deep on that. Nah, I want it. Because I would 100%. I even know, you know what's crazy? I just said I would take the fling. But I want that family thing. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? But, I want that Christmas morning coming downstairs, open gifts. Wife get on your fucking nerves at night, but we happy right now because the kids are opening their gifts. Because you, you, you got something to go home to. Mm-hmm. And you raising the next generation. I want to be part of, a part of raising the next generation. Yeah. You wouldn't want to not have a significant other for the rest of your life, but that seems... And the only reason why I asked this question is I was going... Basically saying it seems like people think that that is like a cool thing. Like we are glorifying being alone, not answering the phones and all of that stuff, but like, hey... The rest of your life is a real thing. That's all I'll say. That is actually a really good point. Yeah. Because it's like, are you going to all, how long are you going to be like this? Yeah. How long do y'all think we can wait? Because for real, for real, it's like, how long, like, how are you going to run this, this independent, I don't need nobody for nothing thing? Right. You like, you, even if you haven't needed anybody, cool. You've yeah. already proved it. Yeah. Now you can actually, you know what I'm saying? So I feel like some people out there to prove that they don't need anybody. Who are you proving it to yourself? Right. We don't give a fuck one, and we for real, for real, want to see you with somebody. Hell yeah. And you know what? That's crazy, because you know what? I see Terrence every day, every single day. But at the end of the night, that motherfucker go that way, I go this way. Mm-hmm. And those are the times you start thinking about, who do who, I have in my who corner? I got. Yep. Because if, God forbid, you know, I was to lose Terrence, or look, one day... I'm about to say, it ain't even about... 25, 35, 45, 55. Hopefully, we get another 70 years again. We both turn 90, 97. I'm I'm seeing that Uh, now, I know. Yeah. I'm letting y'all know that now. But I'm going to be like, what was I doing? Whole nine, what's that? But still, I'm (laughs) making... Right, but look, one day, when your family member, and that's for anybody that's, you know, tight with their mother, tight with their brother, they're going to die, and you're going to have to have your own family. You're right. So you can be like, yo, I got my kid. My kid had a kid. I got grandkids. This is it. Yeah. Think about y'all grandmothers and ask them where they brothers and sisters and fathers and uncles and all of that. And they're going to say, well, they all died. Now I have my grandkids and y'all. 
Yeah, and I love y'all. And on Christmas, I'm cooking for y'all. I'm hey, coming and being with y'all. I'm not trying to be one hundred. That little oh, I'm gonna be the cool aunt. Too many of y'all chicks want to be the cool aunt that shows up and gets drunk. Well, guess what? How? Your cool aunt that shows up and gets drunk goes home by herself or with some random motherfucker at night. Right. Your and uncle's she's not friend. happy, bro. Yeah. You know. Mm-hmm. She's not happy. Y'all don't look into the demons behind the cool aunt. Nope. Y'all see the fun. Oh, she's always fun and laughing and drinking, but y'all don't go home with her. Nah. That's your aunt for a reason. That's your aunt. And and you have some of those demons now, but you mm-hmm. trying to mask you trying to mask it in that. Same thing with the fellas. Yeah, and to me that just sounds like you you to me that's like a punk move like, "Oh, I'm gonna be the aunt at the like y'all saying that like the aunt that's at the party drunk really want to be Alone, you know what I'm saying? Uh-huh. For real, for real, that person always be looking for the, for the, for the love, mm-hmm. but Why they just might have had a hard time right. finding it. Why you think she always getting drunk? Right, and you want that? You think because you having a struggle, you fucking 18, 19, 20 mm-hmm. through 25, you're still at the very peak and beginning of your life. You're a first trimester of your nine, <laughs> and you ready to quit. You're a child. Look at Sierra, y'all. Sierra got you know what? This is what we was talking about. And we got very real. <laughs> we was like, y'all. Well, I'm not going. I'm not trying to try to shit on the ladies. Yeah, but because real, the fellas, because because the fellas need fellas to get too. their shit together too. And what I was gonna say about the fellas before you start going. Yeah, crazy. Yeah, I wasn't about to go crazy. <laughs> I wasn't gonna go crazy on their age or nothing. I was just gonna say, Are you gonna talk about the Sierra's prayer thing? Yeah. Okay, hold that. One thing I was gonna say about the fellas is, fellas, if you 28, 29, 30, 31, 32, 33, 34, and up, what the fuck are you waiting for? What are you gonna do? And it's my thing. I think all the fellas should want sons. I yeah. used to always say I want three girls, but I want a boy now. I do want to have a boy because somebody got to be able to carry your legacy forward. You know what I'm saying? It. There should be another man that's like you that's going to create another either man like you and your last name or whatever's important to you about your heritage goes it's through another. Keep going. You know what I'm saying? Not saying that anything against having girls. Look at Kobe. You right. know what I'm saying? Has, you His know, name is going to go. Yeah. Only, yeah. But you best believe when a woman get married, they're going to be Bryant Jenkins, Bryant Joyner, or something. Yeah. I ain't, they ain't dropping that. Mm-mm. But at the same time. Can you imagine you, your granddad is Kobe? I know. All the pictures of your granddad, he young and in, fit, in shape. You never got to see your, your granddad. That because he had enough money to have a helicopter with your, with your look, RIP my auntie. That's cray. That is cray. That is cray. That lineage, mm-hmm. them angels on your shoulder, I would just be dunking yeah. at eight. On the Fisher Price. <laughs> <Sure>. Yep. <laughs> but I did want to say that because the fellas, fellas, it's like when are you gonna you gonna keep you gonna keep fucking around with the same girl, the same ex, right? Or when are you gonna have kids? You gonna wait till you turn like forty? Like like uh, who was I listening to? I was listening to the Horrible Decisions podcast with uh, Mandy and I forget and Roy and Maul were on there and they was grilling Maul's ass because they were like, nigga, you forty and you don't have kids and you don't not want married. Like, what do you? Yeah, what, what's the what's the plan? And I felt that because it's like, bro, I don't want to have kids at forty, and then when they turn twenty years old, I'm sixty. You yeah. know what I'm saying? I want to be able to my son win the Super Bowl and also Steph Curry shit the other night. Shout out Steph Curry just broke the all time three pointer yes. record. Was able to shoot that ball, shoot the shoot the kiss to his father who was standing on the sidelines. If y'all see that emotion that came out of Steph Curry, it's because his father was right down there, his family in the building. But I felt like him having his dad there, the person that put the ball in his hands, mm-hmm. he went over and bounced that ball to his dad, the, the ball he shot it with. Yep. So I just felt Dope. like, I want that. I want to be able to do that and not be an old-ass nigga and I missed the ball. It hit me. Now I got to oh, leave yeah. the game. Yeah. I don't want no bullshit. Like I want to be able to... Not only be there for it, but I want to be able to be there and be aware. Like, I don't want to be there and be an old-ass nigga. Your son's 30. Your son's not going to break the three-point shooting record at 20. <laughs> yeah. So if you have him at 40, 70, you get the record. And yep. now you're an old nigga that's wheeled out there. Yeah, man. But, yeah. Damn. Right. That goes back to the whole family thing. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? But what was you going to say about the Sierra's prayer? No, nah, maybe you shouldn't. What was you going to say? I was just going to say, women always act like Sierra's prayer works because she prayed and then Russell Wilson came her way. First off, ladies, y'all don't want Russell Wilson. Let's just keep it 100. 
Been Why, were the ladies crazy for Russell Wilson before Sierra? No. Y'all didn't give a fuck about Russell Wilson until he got with Sierra. And you really only got, gave a fuck about him because he got with Sierra and he wasn't really nobody. He, he played in the NFL. But if we're keeping it 100, there's a lot of Russell Wilsons out there that's standing right behind you that you're not going to give a fucking shot to at all. Because guess what? He don't play quarterback for the Seahawks. Y'all praying <laughs> yeah. for a future to turn into Russell. Right. It's a lot and of future, still be the future. future type niggas y'all will get a oh, chance they everywhere. to. Yeah. Y'all give a chance to them. But the, the Russell Wilsons, you got to be a $200 million man. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. The Russell Wilson type. Y'all don't want Russell. You know y'all don't want Russell. Let's keep it a bean. Yeah. Russell was a virgin. A 38 or 34-year-old virgin. Mm -hmm. Before, he saved himself from marriage. So he wouldn't have been able to rock your world. And it, look. Y'all gonna wait for him to propose to Y'all gonna wait for him to propose? Y'all don't want Russell. But you doing, but you on your hands and knees praying. If I'm God, I'm like, hmm. <laughs> I always thought about Look, God went to his Twitter, searched for uh, the pray, all them prayers, and muted them shit. <laughs> <laughs> I always tell people that I wonder how many people would still pray if God had a reply button where he could reply to you. Because he would tell you straight up. And motherfuckers wouldn't like that what they hear, and they wouldn't pray no more. Damn, no bullshit. The biggest thing about religion, period, is that it's hope. There is hope. Yeah. And so, if God had a reply button, a lot of y'all motherfuckers wouldn't like what he would write back. Because who says that he gonna be so nice? Yeah, you know exactly. what I'm saying? Who says he gonna be so... Right. Well, you, we gotta talk to him nice, but do he have to talk to us nice? Trust He's me, not yeah. nice on us when he, when he inflicted his, his will, exactly. you know what I'm saying? And you know what question I had? Was Thanos a villain or a hero? I want you to think about this. Villain. Was Thanos, the, was he the villain or the hero? Was he just out aimlessly killing people? Sure, just because he might have did something that might have made sense, don't mean. And we're not about to have that fucking convo because we already have, and you love to go down this, this route. We're not doing it. So keep it short. I will. I think but, I have one question. Okay. Just because he did something that might have made sense doesn't mean he's a hero. It might make sense What's if the, we only got a pizza in here. If we kill these two niggas, that's more pizza for everybody, right? So that makes sense. Bah, bah. This is still wrong. Because <laughs> people deserve to live. Sure. I don't see how you and can so call Thanos a hero. You believe, you, you, you heard the story of Noah's Ark? Yeah. You heard the story of, uh, so you, you heard that story? Yeah. Noah's Ark. Mm -hmm. You know what happened? Yep. All that, he bought one of every animal. On Male arc. and female. Look, and God, <laughs> give me in my bag. Uh-huh. <laughs> but yeah. Male and female animal. Every, right. on the, uh, God made it rain. God made it rain for Fuck days. everything living. You're everything, fuck it. Shit's not working. We need to start over. Yeah, because people were, people were acting reckless. You're right. All right. Like the world was in despair. Y'all should watch this movie, Mother. If I always say, talk about it, but look, it's watch It's such a great movie. I just watched a video on Twitter. And you know what made me think this? What? Uh, it was a tweet that said, damn, maybe Thanos was on or something. And it was a quoted tweet. Under it, it was these... I saw it with the, the girls with the spaghetti, with the spaghetti in the ass. Walmart. Yeah. I said, you know what? Some people need to go ahead and vanish in the dust. So you think those people don't deserve to live because they put spaghetti on their back? No, you I'm was just doing saying, weird look, shit too, nigga. No, I'm just saying, look, I never did nothing like that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm saying if it was the, if what was to happen, we don't have to worry about the T'Challas of the world vanishing. We might lose a few. But them motherfuckers nah, have to go. You could go when, sna when Thanos snap his fingers. You go, and all three of the spaghetti on the back joint stay here. That would be then fucking what? terrible. Well, guess what? That's why it was bad for Thanos. Well, that's why God control. flooded the earth. Because he said, you know what? I'm getting rid of everybody. Yeah, everything. Right. And then look, y'all need to, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to end it at that. I'm going to just say, when you watch Infinity War, Endgame again, it's easy because everybody's looking at it like, oh, he's a villain. He's trying to kill everybody. The man, when he stands there, he's talking about balance. Just watch it again and open your third fucking eye. Because it's the same bitches that had the spaghetti on their back. Guess what? Now they dressed up as Iron Man, Captain America, trying to save everybody. They're going to win. They're going to be the ones it. that stay alive. Them going back and snapping everybody back does what? It puts the world right back in the bullshit that it's already been in. So you know what I'm thinking? They snap half the population away. We yeah. can start over. No more racism. No more this. It's not enough people to hold on to. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. They snapped everything back. Tony Stark killed himself to get the world back. So guess what? Comes back racism, oppression, um, 
Then all, all types of that of, shit. All that shit comes right back. If he flooded the what earth right now, we what would get rid of all of that. Mm -hmm. Niggas are going to tweet me and be like, you know what you were spitting when it comes to that Thanos shit? Because trust me. You're right. So you think if Thanos did do that shit right now, he would, you would essentially get rid of racism. Because there's no big guy now. Now everybody is cutting The half. world is even. It, it's all about would, everything would be balance. Even. Yeah, like balance. Like, that's why he put that thing on his finger, and he yes. was like... And that's why you never saw Thanos say, who are you? I'm killing you. It was always him defending himself, or I'm going to kill you since you're coming at me. Type shit, yeah. Otherwise, it's... Or you standing in my way of my my, my of what plan, I'm trying to do, I'm yes. going to take you out. Straight so, up. Wow, that's a hell of a point. Hell yeah, man. Speaking of movies, uh, did you see the thing about West Side Story? No. West Side Story, Steven Spielberg, mm -hmm. biggest name in movies, historically. Yeah. Um... The, his remake came out in the theaters and it did terrible at box office, bro. Wow. For real. It did terrible at box office and it was just kind of like, they said on the heels of the Ridley Scott joint, they said movies that are... Had no idea that he did that. Yeah. Wow. Movies that are geared towards older audiences have not been doing well at the box office because older folks are not going to the theater no more, bro. Damn. And so, like, Think everybody's going on their phones. 18-year-olds yep. don't give a fuck about a West Side Story musical remake, 19, yep. 20, 20, even us. I don't give a fuck about that. I can watch the original. Yeah, y'all need to remake movies that came out a little bit not long ago. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. They Why was... don't y'all remake uh, movies like, you know, some of the movies we loved when we was young? You didn't like the Back to the Future remakes. I don't want to see Black Back to the Future unless y'all going to really do it. All right, bet. Let them go to the future for real this time. Don't be on some bullshit. Because back then, the hoverboard seemed like it was dope. Like, all right, we might really have that shit in 2010. You don't want what you're asking for. You don't want that. Don't. Let's say they remake The Wood. Nah, they I don't remake mean, Waiting to Exhale. No, I don't mean stuff like that. Like, you can't remake movies like that. But you can remake movies. Like, if you're talking about, like, Jurassic Park is successful behind remakes. Stuff like that. Like, he wanted to remake West Side Story, Steven Spielberg. Why don't you remake Jaws? You can actually do a dope-ass real shark now. Exactly. And it was like, done in the fucking 60s when you yeah, did Yeah, why not remake that? And it's because they said... Or remake E.T. Yes. Or, or some new shit. Aliens. Yeah, like, you got movies you can remake. Nobody remember Ar remember Artificial Story. Intelligence with the robot kid? I thought that was dope. I thought that was dope. What he could do with that now? Yeah. We basically live in that world now. We basically right there. But um, they were saying that basically it what the learning point for them was the fact that they they're gonna they gotta be real careful about how they market these films to older people. Yeah. They ain't going out to the theaters to see it. And he didn't do a partnership with HBO, whoever, whoever. So, you know what? I had a uh, list of cheap ass gifts. A list of cheap gifts. Yeah. Okay. Ladies. List of cheap ass gifts to get your man. You literally pay under under twenty dollars for all of this stuff, and you can tell me if it's bullshit. First thing, shout out to the Christmas vibes, man. We trying to help y'all get this yes, Christmas sir. right. You know, look, these are the cheap ass gifts that I recommend. And honestly, fellas, every gift every gift on this list you would appreciate. Terrence is gonna validate. Y'all saw how he was trying to shit on my list last week, low key though. Went in with the mad defense. I said, but am I gonna go in and do that? These are cheap ass gifts, so I'm not gonna say it's gonna be something great. It's cheap. Number one, pack of car air freshness. That's a great ass, cheap ass gift. Here you go. You love black ice? Here you go, nigga. Bet. Black ice. Black ice. Look, an uh, eight pack of deodorant from Costco. That's you a got, legit gift. It's like, bet. bet. I'm set for some weeks, months. Unless he used the, the one with non aluminum or some shit right. like that and that he orders from Amazon. If, you, if anybody is still like they're using the wet roll on joints, the, 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 the roll joints. Oh, yeah, them joints. You. you, you it's time to change, bro. Some um, of y'all might be using the... Uh, also, shout out to people that are using natural deodorant and changing the game because yeah, of all no the aluminum. shit. You know, most of your lymph nodes in your body are under your arm. Yeah. Cancer. Yeah. Um, $10 gift card to Taco Bell. That motherfucker will run trash. three or four meals. No, hold on. Let me tell you. Uh, that's a trash gift. How? That's like getting somebody a Safeway gift card. Really? How? Do you know what $10 can buy? How many Doritos Locos you can get with $10? Eight. Eight. That's my thing. The fact that you're giving somebody a Taco Bell gift card. I said it was a cheap ass gift. Don't even get that. We're going to feel like I can take my own $10 up to the Taco Bell one time. Fuck that. If you don't give me a Taco Bell gift card, give me an $85 gift card. All right, let me ask you about this next <laughs> gift. Something that I can be like, you know what? I can go to Taco Bell a couple times. A $10 just take me to the Taco Bell. Give me a ride. And you buy You obviously I'd don't go to Taco Bell. Bell. Ladies, don't Nobody do that. That's the gift. We just talked about the gift card. We're not doing that. Oh, uh, here you go. Y'all okay, thought yeah, that it was just for the fellas. Ladies, 
Give me a ten dollar Taco Bell gift card and see what happens. You give me a gift card, I'll take it because that's a couple meals. Well, all right, what do you think about a couple that? meals? Ten dollar Taco Bells, a couple meals. Yeah. Around? What meals are you getting? This nigga's getting Doritos two, Locos, two soft tacos, and a courtesy cup. <laughs> What's up with them? Hey, look. What if somebody got you the big value pack of Winter Fresh? I'm mad at it. That's a dope ass. That's gift. a dope. That gift. gum gonna run you for at least oh, a five. couple. Come on, man. Give me, hook me up with five. Don't give me no no. Uh, Winter Fresh is OG. Five Winter is Fresh, you're right. Five oh. don't last as long as Winter Fresh. A lot of y'all niggas got five shape ups. That's not true. <laughs> a new broom and dust pan. A new broom and dust pan is lit. And then new, again, a new toilet scrubber kit. Terrell, no, no, and no. Not for Christmas. Man, that's a, that's a dope-ass gift. Okay, hey, let man, somebody I, get us. We need a new I broom do, and dustpan. Oh, so I didn't give it to you. How? Can you imagine a broom and dustpan on your tree? All right, look. Somebody say, look. I got a tree. I didn't, I didn't, look, it's not one of the gifts that you wrap. This it's is the, the one, the early joints. Yeah. Like, look. The next one is super vital. A pack of hangers. Who the fuck don't need no extra hangers? No bullshit. Here you go. 30 pack. Love you so much. Ice cream scoop or pizza cut if they do, if they do that. Ice cream scoop or pizza cutter? Pack of chip bag clips. A lot of All niggas right. just rolling their bags. Terrell, this is horrible. I said it was cheap. Chip bag clips for Christmas? You're making the Christmas thing a big deal. I just said cheap. Why not ass some gifts. cheap ass headphones? The nigga might not have no headphones. Cheap nah, ass headphones. See, cause nah, because look, I want AirPods. If you can't give me AirPods, don't give me the knockoff ones. But get you some chip bag clips. You're gonna be sick as shit on Christmas. I, uh, fun fact everything on this list is shit that me and Terrence need. So I will be so I will be thankful for every gift. So on the your year. black ass will be thankful for everything on this list. This nigga has a new ice cream scooper and pizza cutter. This nigga made a grocery <laughs> list and then just decided to say it on the podcast. <laughs> it's not a grocery list. Bag of air freshener, eight bag of deodorant. This is this nigga's grocery list. Okay, the deodorant, yeah. <laughs> Ten dollar gift card to Taco. Bell. <laughs> I thought it was road family pass. size winter fresh. <laughs> Terrell, if you don't get a your new fucking broom and dust pan, grocery list. If somebody got me a new broom and dust pan, I would be so grateful because we need. You it. know what? I'll, I'm gonna I'm spin this. Terrell is right because he just going to show that we simple. Shopping for your guy should be simple. Don't think too crazy because we we actually appreciate uh, what I was trying to say. <laughs> <laughs> don't think we only appreciate big gifts. We know y'all. We gotta get the fellas. We not on that 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 side of it. It's not always that simple. You're gonna have to come with some very look. If we do simple. It's got to have some mad thoughts behind exactly. it. Exactly. I got you some Crocs, but they signed by the owner of Crocs. Hey, <laughs> did you see the, but, uh, the new Crocs that came out by... Um, oh, yeah, I saw those. People flipping them for 300 Something Crocs by the Sale Bembry joints. People flipping them for 300 300 Them joints is going for like 700 on StockX. Yeah, see? People Ridiculous. flipping them bitches. Ridiculous. Cray. Did you want to talk about the um, Memphis Bleak still smoking that la-la-la? The... Uh, do the loan thing with Biden? I mean, we can. I didn't think that he was really going to do it. Joe Biden. And I heard that if, go ahead, for context, Joe Biden, the president of the United States, for all of our international listeners, he said and during his campaign, he was talking about canceling student loan debt, specifically knocking off $10,000 from everybody's student loan debt if your parents uh, or if you live in a household that makes less than $125K or if you're somebody that makes less than $125,000 a year. That was very specific. And this motherfucker, how he ran for president. He went city to city talking about it, and they just re recently um, came out and said that uh, Biden doesn't have a plan to continue to withhold payments for student loan, nor look further into um, stopping the student loan debt type thing in this new year. And so now people are kind of mad because he kind of said that, and this is just another thing that is kind of coming out about Joe that pissed people off. I didn't think that he was ever going to do it anyway. It, honestly, canceling student loan debt seems like some shit that they would never really do. It always seems like, damn, the only person that I really believe would do it would be somebody like Bernie. Bernie, yeah. But I Bernie never was, thought Biden was really going to do it, yeah. honestly. Uh, yeah. Like Bernie and Elizabeth Warren, you see how they've been getting that Elon Musk in them? What about them having so much money? Just about how they're not paying... The, how they're not paying Elon Musk actually just came at Elizabeth Warren and called her a Karen. You didn't see that? Nah. So Elizabeth Warren basically was like, um, she said, tell Elon Musk that if he paid his taxes, then, hold on, wait, what did she say? We can like, get rid of school loans. 
She said if Elon Musk paid his taxes, then we can free up money for something. I, I don't remember. I don't have it. But all I know is he was like, oh. probably because if he if he's making billies, then his taxes being paid would be some 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 probably some heavy money. And that would be the only way we could really cancel student loans if people like him though. Yeah, if people like him pay their their grants. Meaning these motherfuckers are in the top one percent that are paying zero dollars in federal tax. So I mean, it is what it is. Honestly, if you somebody think, said you got to get on the podcast and say Terrence was right about Biden, I don't even remember us having a deep combo, but I'll give it to you, bro. We were bamboozled. The black ass celebrities that came out and said, "Hey, if you don't vote, it's a vote for Trump." Honestly, yeah, I don't think they're gonna get me the the next time, y'all. This time we didn't really have a choice. We voted for Biden because. If you didn't vote for Biden, you really were voting for Trump. We barely made it out of that damn election. They even we barely made it out so much that they thought they thought we stole it, bro. They literally stormed the Capitol after that. So like, right. All I'll say, damn, that's crazy that his his reign was just terror from day one to the last fucking day. Crazy. Yeah. Uh, but Biden is doing what Democrats do, making promises. Not necessarily keeping him. I mean, I'm not going to say he's doing a horrible job. I'm not going to sit here and act like I'm all the way in the, into politics. But the news of him not doing the, the student loans thing, was it surprising? Yeah. But then again, no. Yeah. I also heard that if they do get rid of student loans and in total, like everybody's student loans, that things are going to start going up. Because I heard it would be inflationary because we're going to have to. I forget what that term is. But shit will start getting more expensive than it of normally course, was. It's inflation, but if like, they tax the rich... Milk, instead of being $5, it's going to go to 10 Like, Right. You know what I'm saying? If they were to tax... I don't, I don't think people understand that you working a $75,000 job, $75, job a year or even a $50,000 job a year. Yeah. And that's only making $24 to $37, $35 an hour. If you make between that money, you're paying more taxes at the end of the year than Jeff Bezos, Elon Musk... All these people at the top 1% because that's where the tax taxes were cut. So people like Bernie, Elizabeth Warren, they say we need to fix the rigged tax. She said, let's fix the rigged tax code. So the person of the year, Elon Musk, who they just said, yeah. can pay his real taxes and, and not- stop freeloading off everybody else. Because if they pay taxes, that could literally clear the student loan debt or, or put a big chunk or we can afford to. Because they'd be paying taxes on a yearly basis. Exactly. Right. And so we would eventually be out of the deficit. And so it's fucked up, bro. You're right. Until they, until it seems like the rich people start putting their money up for real. And that's how we would avoid inflation. That's how milk could stay the same. Gas could stay the same because we wouldn't have to raise everything to pay for the... You know what I'm saying? It's fucking... It is, it's annoying, bro. It sounds like a good plan, Andrew Yang. Remember Andrew Yang said My he was going to get $1,000 a month. Yep. Niggas a quit their job. And he ran his whole campaign yeah. believed in that. What did I have on here? Did you hear about um just while we in the in that space? You heard about that judge in uh Louisiana? Look. You heard about that judge in Louisiana? What judge? Uh her name was Michelle Odinette. She was caught using the N-word. A judge, a woman, and she came out and was like begging people for forgiveness and she was like oh, i just hope to be pardoned because i was i was on a sedative i didn't know what i was saying type shit but it's like she put hella black folks in jail damn she did hella well of course if she a judge probably yeah and she wasn't using the n-word like in a song type shit she was saying it in an ownership fashion damn she was like saying it the hard er yeah and that's why i was saying like when people be like oh well it's the it's the well the ju- 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 well, it's the law. Well, it's this. And when black people be talking about things that they don't th- feel like is fair, yeah. you got judges. I that, understand the N word. Yeah. yeah. And this is where that this is where that KKK white mask, they're your lawyers, doctors, judges, policemen, shit comes from. Damn, no bullshit. Clear case of it. And she wants to be pardoned. Fuck no. Everybody she put in jail that's black should be let go. Yeah, because racial, yeah, racial discrimination. Yeah, because they wouldn't let somebody that said the N-word like that sit on a jury to convict them. So why should they stay in jail if if if, if they convicted somebody? I can, I would say. You got some birthdays? 
I got all the birthdays. Let me I don't just... know if the people that hit me hit you for the birthdays, but probably. My boy Dante Frazier, birthday 11. Happy birthday. Aaliyah, happy birthday from Jay. I don't know if I said it last week, but your brother Jay said happy birthday. Maybe happy birthday twice. My boy X, X, birthday on the 19th. Happy birthday. Anaya, happy belated birthday. My boy Abdi, uh, birthday on the 18th, turns 18. Happy birthday. I don't know if you want me to stop after everyone. I mean, there's a lot of birthdays nice? you're going to start bitching if I... Uh, my boy Abdi, happy 18th. Uh, Micah, happy belated. Talia, happy birthday from your boyfriend. Um, my boy Skylar, happy birthday. Omar, uh, happy birthday. Uh, Rich, happy belated. CJ, happy belated. Cache, happy belated. Happy belated, Cache. She hit me too. My boy Mo Wavy, birthday is uh Christmas Eve. Happy birthday, sir. Oh, well, coming up. Well, before the next podcast. Uh, Jada, happy 29th. My boy Eater Bravo, 20th. And then my boy Marquise, happy 27th, sir. Happy birthday, everybody. It's Sagittarius season. Um, What you always say, have a good meal. Yo, 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 yo. Happy birthday to everybody whose birthday is coming up. Uh... Turn up. You only get one uh, day of the year that's yours, so turn up. Especially if you don't have to share it with somebody. That's dope. Uh, Shade. Enjoy your birthday. Get a good meal in because for real, for real, if you eat like shit on your birthday, for real, fuck that. If you have cake and ice cream, you got to have some good meals before that. So Hold on, wait. You mean when you say eat a good meal, you mean like you have to eat good on your birthday, period. I don't like mean they should be eating chicken, breast, and have, rice. You need to wake up, and hopefully if your family fuck with you, they need to make you some food. Nah, that's the day you're supposed to have saying? a cheat meal. You go to five that's guys. That's what I'm saying. You wake up, eat pancakes. or Not that you're supposed to eat healthy. I'm saying eat good. Don't be that day where, damn, I ain't even eat. Damn, I'm hungry. You shouldn't even be hungry on your birthday. But yeah. Turn up, y'all. Happy birthday. Happy birthday, y'all. Shit, Sagittarius season. What's next? Capricorn? Uh, I think so. Yep. Got to be. All right, Batman, we're going to the NFL picks. Did you want to talk about y'all lost to the Cowboys last week? All that bullshit y'all were talking and went out there and lost, and now y'all trying to make it seem like y'all were Terrell keeps team. saying all that bullshit we was talking because we said simply we want Dallas. Nah, but we it's did like, not. You keep saying it's all not, that bullshit we was talking. Let me let everybody the, in the world know. The Cowboys are the ones who guarantee the victory. The Cowboys are the ones who brought benches to our stadiums and put their names on it three days before the fucking game. We did not... We weren't sitting here saying we better dog these niggas. Y'all we were said, saying that. Bro, we said we we're going to beat them. We kept saying the consistency of us was we can beat them. And we almost did. We almost made that shit happen. Yeah, they dogged us on that day defense. I got to give it. They have a fucking beast in Micah Parsons. I did not think he was going to be as good as he was. I think I like how they're using him the way he's supposed to be used now. Yeah. But, like, the art, like, it was a lot of Cowboys fans saying shit like, yeah, y'all talked all of that shit. Who? Because we said we want Dallas, the number one team in the division, that's shit talking. Where, and then this is another thing. Cowboys, y'all literally had a full lineup. The only person that didn't play, I don't think it was Pollard. You feel me? Y'all might have had some other people that didn't play, but weapon wise, Dak, Zeke, Cooper, Gallup, CD, fucking beast. Y'all have a whole, and y'all entire defense is healthy. You know what I'm saying? We have nothing but mad missing niggas. And you got all these Cowboys fans. Y'all happy because y'all beat Heineke, DeAndre Carter, Cam Sims, Adam Humphreys, our bum ass O line. See, but this is what I this was what talking I was about. Say. We this is what y'all to, do when y'all real, lose. We managed to win games that we were supposed to lose. So my thing is this were we talking trash? Yes. yes. But so now you can't go for back them and to try have to- that loaded ass team. Beat us only by seven points. This is what I was going to tell Terrell. This wasn't a game to win anyway. The game for us to win is going to be the game after this game. Motherfuckers, man. Because look, I told Terrell, if we'd have went out there and won, it'd have felt good. We'd have been happy. But then what if we go and lose the second game? Then it's going to be like, damn, we won the first one and fuck that. The second game, we got a chance to make a real look. Because look, if it ain't going to be us, let's say Eagles go out here and beat us. All right, bet Eagles. We're going to do y'all that justice. Because I think if the Eagles beat us, that's it. We're going to go ahead and beat the Cowboys. And then hopefully when y'all play them next, the Eagles might be able to spoil that. But, like, my thing is the fact that we are all still in this hunt for this division, Cowboys fans, and y'all not looking that good. They got a three-game lead on the division. Terrell, but they're nine and four. Everybody else is, like, six and something. Y'all are six and seven. The Giants suck. 
Terrell, but there's still a chance, though. The fact that there's still a chance. The Eagles, it's a chance for y'all to go to, to have it a wild card It was 24-0 at halftime. We lost 27 to, to 20. Come on, bro. Let's be real proud. Good job, Cowboys fans. Y'all beat us. See how, this is what, but see, this is the shit that I was talking about. They beat us. But last week, this nigga was on a high horse. Because, nigga, we won four a four-game winning, winning streak. streak. Talking this big shit. We won a four-game winning streak. Then when they lose us, we're not even a good team. All right. Terrell. We've never been a good team, for real. We got Heineke out there. But that wasn't your energy. Y'all was Heineke before. Because we was managing to, we beat, we managed, we was managing to win, for real. Hey, did you see? Did, did we ever say that, out, did I ever say we had the better team? Never. So, so hush. If, hush, the hush today, if the playoffs started today, if the playoffs started today, I don't know. They said y'all would either play somebody or Brady. If the playoffs started today, not only are we in it, but we would be playing Brady, I think. Y'all? Mm-hmm. And, and you already, hey, look, we already beat, we already tapped that ass this year. Honestly, the COVID crisis that's going on in the NBA and the NFL is nuts. It is. The NFL, you know, the NBA just said they're getting ready to start doing some shit too. I don't know what's going on, y'all. And it seems like, look, everybody's vaccinated. It's just people just not, I think people just getting a little too willy nilly thinking that they can't still get and spread the vaccine, the virus. Right. And they're getting it and, and it's spreading. And I think the bad thing is it's just happening in a position where it's like this is really about to impact the outcome of a lot of these games. Like, if we go in out there with the players that they have currently on our COVID list, we're definitely not. We're definitely going to lose. We don't have any. It doesn't look like we have anybody that's for real healthy. Our friends got hit, got hit with that the worst. Yeah, for sure. We're not going to have the Rams our whole losing. line. Like, yeah, the Browns, the Browns now have to play this game, whoever they have this week. They got the Raiders. No Baker, no Jarvis. Can play. Yeah, see, and like, that's why I said, bro, you never know. Keep saying that it's like over with for everybody and that they, that Cowboys got the season locked up. Nobody can really confidently say that they have their division locked up for real, for real. Yeah. Right, Even man. you think that y'all got a chance to creep in, but you're talking to us crazy. I'm not out here talking shit to people and then saying we suck. Terrell, you are out here talking shit I to talk people shit and to saying that Chiefs. y'all suck. I talk shit to the Chiefs fans. You because definitely be out here saying we that you suck. saying we lost these games. We try and beat y'all. This nigga picked, but them, we definitely picked the suck. Cowboys to beat y'all by like 30. And then y'all won. And you was pressed. But I was saying that like, oh shit, we beat y'all. We not Bro, a good we, team. We y'all be thing. making it seem like y'all are a legit Terrell, ass team. No, we do not. What the fuck are you talking about? I hate, can't stand when niggas do this. Go listen to you in the we, last podcast. Because we won. The four. same way you listed them niggas that's on your team, DeAndre Carter, you was making it seem like y'all had a low-key squad. Terrell, I didn't name none of our... Terrell, those are the people we out there with. We do have a squad. You feel me? Deami Brown, limited. Cam, uh, not Cam, I'm sorry, Curtis Samuel, limited, non-factors. When you looked at our offense, them people that I named, B people, they played majority of the fucking game. We got Cam Sims out there. Terry McLaurin got injured in the second quarter. So it's like, fuck it. You know what I'm saying? Like, we really, I'm not naming our dogs. We was out there with scrubs for real. And I'm like, damn, like, for real, for we still in the game. And then mm-hmm. afterwards, people saying, yeah, all that trash talk. I'm like, yeah, we talk trash because gotta- we was the... We like it's like David Goliath. We was the we was the small like we just had the spunk. Y'all was supposed to beat us, but trying to flip it and seem like we was talking all this trash. Hold on, wait. Y'all are the nine and four Cowboys. Like this, but but this going on too long, sir. Let's get to the picks. Like when I, when I keep going back and forth with you. When about I lost this. to the Ravens, I had to eat that shit. I ate my L. What are you talking about? I don't think y'all did as an organization, Terrell. We I did. Think y'all eat fan our base L. took a a. Uh, Y'all put up a safety net of, oh, we're not a good team, so don't be proud now that y'all lost. But Terrell, if y'all won, you, y'all no, will be I'm saying not, y'all was a beast ass No, team. Terrell, that team that we had out there was not ready for that Cowboys, that, for them Cowboys. Then was not the same team. We losing, mad, we, we're losing mad niggas left and right. We don't have, we, we still don't have the same niggas out there. And during the game, we was losing niggas. We got our fucking third string center out there. These niggas pummeling through. Mm-hmm. It's like, yo, y'all got it. It's cool. But like I'm sick of fighting for the for the Redskins when we're just so we we're, we're, we're out there with, with Heineke, our fucking like because put it like this. And yeah, at this point y'all played a whole. When season. we talked shit last year when we beat the Cowboys twice when they had Dalton, what was they saying? What was the excuse? We ain't even got that. But we can't take that excuse with Heineke because we're confident in our team and we just not gonna say fuck them like they did last year. Most Cowboys fans, fuck the Cowboys, whatever. We don't give a fuck. Didn't give a fuck when Dak played. Our lead guy, 
let me tell y'all, Fitzpatrick was supposed to be the day one with, like, look, undoubtable starter. He undoubtedly beat Heineke out for that role, injured in the first series. We've been playing the whole season without backup. But do you see us say, oh, well, we, we got our backup? Nah, we be trying to be confident. But sitting here acting like this is the even matchup, why y'all ain't do that last year? When we had Heineke last year against y'all Cowboys and beat y'all. But it wasn't about backup then. It wasn't about how y'all still had CD, still had Cooper that played. They didn't still have CD had last year. They did have CD last year. This CD second year, he was talking to the rookies and Micah Crazy in the uh, Hard Knocks. Still had CD last year. Still had Cooper last year. Still had Zeke and Pollard and all these niggas play us last year with Cooper, but we bust y'all. But y'all said the, the excuse was that. But now we got injuries and it's, oh, nah, fuck that. Y'all was talking shit. For real? Come on, bro. The energy is not kept. That's why I said, this second game, keep that fucking energy because I'm going to tell you, this second game going to be the one where it's like, all right, bet. You hit me first, but y'all seen what we did at the end of that game. So y'all going to be like, Craig with the break. You seen what we did. Y'all done already got slammed on the car and choked out. That was the first part. Now we got up and we just, we, we threw the brick at the end. Mm, mm. I said, oh, this nigga can be hurt. This nigga can be hung. Okay. <laughs> All right, let's get through it, man. Chiefs Chargers on Thursday night. Great game. But I, I tried to tell y'all about the Chiefs. Like, we, they, we haven't beat these niggas in 12 games. And I told y'all, when I said it on Twitter, I said the Chiefs are going to go back to the Super Bowl. Everybody was like, oh, ha, 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 Patriots. Or ha, ha, Titans. Back when the Titans still had Henry. Oh, yeah. ha, ha, this. All right, bet. Now, look. The Chiefs are whooping ass. And watch how they whoop the Chargers ass. Chargers, you suck. Even though y'all 8-5. and five. Damn. They got a great-ass record. I think the Chargers went out there and looked great. I personally think. Uh, who, did they, who did they just play? The Giants? Mm-hmm. Yeah. All I know is the Chargers look great, man. And I felt like the Chargers have an opportunity like Denver had where it's Thursday night. It's their time to prove and take the division away from these guys. I'm going to go with the Chargers. I think the oh, Chiefs. Tripping. I think the Chiefs have some dogs. The Chiefs have found that rhythm, bro. They're not going to lose. They might not. But I'm still going to pick the Chargers just as a sleeper pick for Thursday night. Just so you know. Yeah. That because let me tell you, just like how y'all had a reason. That, look, when y'all played the Chiefs, it wasn't just they didn't just smoke y'all. You know a division game is any given Sunday. That's and with a, that's the opportunity fact. that the Chargers have, I'm going to give it to the Chargers this week. And it's at uh, SoFi, so. Oh, yeah. They dope. got the leg up. Uh, I'm going to go Chiefs. I just think the Chiefs are going to do Chiefs things. And you know what's crazy? We're saying all of this in the shadows of the COVID list. Exactly. Yeah, so you really never know who's going to be no out bullshit. there. No bullshit. 77 players in climbing. All right. We got Raiders at Browns. I'm going to pick the Raiders for this because they have no Baker. They have no Jarvis. I'm gonna, yeah, I'm going to go Raiders too. I don't think Keenum is going to be able to hold off uh, Crosby and Chubb go out there and have a crazy game. I know, right? Right. Patriots at Colts. This is a huge game that for the Colts. That is a huge game. And these two games are on Saturday. Yeah, they got two Saturdays. They're starting the sat- it's holiday season, so they're doing they're the Saturday, Saturday games. Saturday. Um, so Saturday night, Patriots at Colts. I am picking the Colts. I think I'm gonna go ahead and go with the the Patriots. Like that's gonna be this is gonna be my sleeper pick, the number the one team in the league. I think the Patriots have been winning, and yeah, it's cool. Belichick is getting all this praise, whatever. Yeah, but I'm gonna pick the Colts to upset. That's gonna be my sleeper pick for the week. I think I'm gonna pick the. I'm gonna go ahead and go with the uh, the, the New England Patriots. I'm gonna stick with the hot the hot boys. All right, bet. Cowboys at Giants. Cowboys. Um, as much as I want the Giants to win, I do think the Cowboys are going to win that game. But then again, the, as much as we need, I'm going with the Giants. I'll happily take the L every week for the Cowboys for the joy I would have in my heart if the Cowboys, I mean, I'm sorry, if the Giants can go out there and do that. Giants, you've been playing spoiler all year. Y'all almost beat us in the first game. Beat up on the Eagles. Go out mm-hmm. there and beat up on the Giants. I mean, go out there and beat up on the Cowboys. I'm behind y'all. Come on, G-Man. Hey, Chris, what's popping? Let's get it. Right. And then the Texans, come on outside, Craig. This is the rematch. <laughs> <laughs> Playing the Jaguars. <laughs> and they both 2 and 11. Both 2 and 11. I'm picking the Texans to win this game. <sighs> Pat Mills. I like Mills. Do you know the Dolphins are actually like low key, like 12th in the league or some shit like that? Oh, because they're 6 and 7. They're not fighting in the AFC. Yeah. Uh, let me go for that Houston Jacksonville game. Let me go Jacksonville. I always pick Jacksonville. I feel like and lose and they lose. I'm gonna go with Jacksonville because didn't Houston win the first game? Yeah, I'm gonna go with Jacksonville. I'm, I'm gonna go in Texans. We got Titans and Steelers. 
the Titans are nine and four. Yeah. How? They were like eight and one when they had Henry. No, they weren't. They were like seven and one when they had Henry. Or like six and one. They haven't had a positive record. They've been losing games too. They're like almost even. But I'm still gonna pick the Titans over the Steelers because I hate the Steelers, number one. Uh, number two, I do think the Titans are going to win. This is Steelers in Tennessee. <sighs> I'm going to go and with... you know what? Claypool got way too much hate for that celebration when he legit was the only person playing in the whole drive. Yeah. I felt like he definitely made a rookie mistake. Not even a rookie mistake, but... Uh, uh, he uh, just a football, young guy Awareness mistake. needs to go down on Madden. <laughs> but I think if you looked at that drive, remember he made that crazy-ass catch we was looking at? Yeah. We For was sure. like, he, is he a, caught that. He's a baller. And I think, yeah. I, you know what? I'm going Pittsburgh. Claypool got something to prove now. Y'all done pissed me off. If that. he plays. If he plays. Motherfucking Tomlin was pissed. I'm going to go Titans. Fuck you, Steelers. I'm, I almost picked y'all. I'm going Steelers. Jets at Dolphins. Dolphins. 100%. Dolphins are on a roll. This is a big game for the Dolphins. It's a division rival, so I think the Jets going to come out here and be like, Yo, y'all got us fucked up, but I think the Giants. I'm sorry, I think the the Dolphins are outlast them because the Dolphins have a little bit more to fight yeah. for. But then again, you never know. And you Dolphins know, and Jets. The the best games this week, or the best games to watch, are these six and seven, five and eight, seven and six teams going back to, back and forth. Yes. Um, which gets us to that next game. So yeah. I didn't even pick my my winner yet. I thought you just said you was going to have the Dolphins win. No, I didn't pick. All right, go ahead. I'm gonna pick the Dolphins. <laughs> Motherfucker. <laughs> but you didn't let me pick that. I didn't let you pick. My bad. Um six and seven Washington. Six and seven Eagles. See, that's gonna be a good ass game. Yeah, it is. I, we're gonna bust it. I'm sorry, let me just talk shit. Eagles fans, stop. Now watch Eagles when y'all go out there and we Eagles bust that stop. So Terrence, if the I don't give a fuck if we go out there with all practice squad niggas, y'all know what's up when we play y'all. We're getting a W. And when we get our team back, this is my thing. At Lincoln Financial. If we go out there and y'all got all of y'all starters cooking us, you know what I'm saying? Miles Sanders hurts and everybody cooking us. We can't really get mad. I'll give you y'all credit if y'all win. But do you think I'm going to pick y'all? Nah. Because they got Devontae Smith. Is Ken isn't Kendall Fuller get put on COVID list or something like that? Mm-hmm. So who about to play corner? St. Juice? COVID list. Oh, my God. Who do y'all have? I'm picking the Eagles. <laughs> I, I love I love the Washington football team. Grew up in a Washington football team household, but I think the Eagles gonna win this game. Sorry, y'all. And I think this is gonna spoil y'all season. Damn. I think we could lose this game and it could kind of ruin everything. But it's definitely a must win. I'm picking Washington. It's a must win. Eagles fans, y'all know what's up. I've been talking shit all year. It's crazy how once we get here, uh -huh. the the soldiers we have left, but the energy is the same. Yeah. Um, then I'm picking Eagles. Cardinals at Lions. Cardinals. Cardinals, Lions. I'm going to go with Cardinals here. Yeah. I just think the Cardinals are too strong, even though they just lost DeAndre Hopkins. I heard. The regular season. Um, I'm going to go Cardinals. Panthers, Bills. The Bills legit been dropping games, bro. They looked really good against that team, though. They did. I'm going to go with the, the Buffalo Bills. I don't think Cam is making anything happen in Carolina. He got I'm benched. CJ Walker played. But they still going to go out there with, with Cam, though. You think? Probably. I don't know. But um, I'm going to go Bills, too. This is always a fun one. 76 Bengals, 76 Broncos. Bengals. Y'all know. Y'all y'all ever heard the name Eric Decker? Okay, yeah. Last time we played, 80-yard touchdown pass. I'm picking my Broncos to win. Oh, wow. I remember that. You remember that? Yeah. The nigga tipped it and caught it. Um, I'm picking my Broncos to win. This is a must-win game for us. I love the Burrow and Chase combo, but I'm picking us to win. I'm going to go ahead and go with the Bengals. Wow. Because y'all are unreliable ass We bunch. just, how? I mean, we are, but how you not going to pick us? Because, I don't know, Chase and Burrow, they might be able to do that to y'all. They might be able to do that to y'all. Yeah. Y'all have busted, y'all are busted coverage team. Yep. How the hell is he open? Ha <laughs> ha, like shit. <laughs> But you know what? Y'all have a good rushing game, though. Got a great rushing game. And honestly, the key to stopping the Bengals, they said, is to stop Joel Mixon. If you can stop Mixon, they be, in, they be flustered. I'm going to go with Denver. And with Simeon. I'm going to go with Denver. I'm going to ride with my boy. With, uh, with, uh, my, uh, Simeon. 
it, with Simmons and, and Jack Kareem, I feel like we might be able to pick them off and certain. Yeah. I don't know. I'm a, I'm picking my Broncos to win, man. Fuck fuck y'all Bengals. Who that who, who they who? Um another good game. Falcons and Niners. Uh Niners. Niners, for sure. Falcons, I mean, y'all, y'all have definitely the Falcons been climbing for real, for real. Every time I pick against the Falcons, it seems like they lose. Yep. And I'm, I'm sorry, they win. Yeah. So I'm gonna go with the Niners just cause. But damn, you know what? Fuck that. Falcons, let's go for the upset. Wow. Let's go for the upset. Cause I've been picking the Niners and the Niners been I feel like they I, I don't be right whenever I pick with the Niners. I'm going Niners, man. Kittle is going off. And I let all y'all tell me that I was stupid. I was disrespectful. Whoever y'all put TJ Hawkins and y'all put Kelsey, all these people over Kittle, and guess what? Kittle's the best in the league. We got uh Seahawks at Rams. We don't know if Kittle's the best in the league. Kittle I don't feel is, like arguing with you about no, it. No, right like, now, like right now on paper, no lie, he's the best in the league. Like stat stat wise. Check the stats. He's the best. He's number one. All right, bet. Seattle and LA. I'm going LA. For sure. Odell back. Uh, Odell hopefully. Beckham is back. Hopefully. He had a great game. Hopefully. We have another great game that we can say that. I'm gonna go Rams. Rams. And you see Aaron Donald? Defense. Fucking. All right, Packers, Ravens. This is a great game. I don't even know if you're hating on Donald or if you're giving him props. Nah, honestly, I had to give him props for that last game. Four fumbles, two batted passes, three sacks, one sack to end the game. Um, Green Bay and Baltimore. Green Bay. I'm going to pick Green Bay, but I think the Ravens can come my way with this joint. The Ravens even have – what happened with uh, Lamar Jackson? He didn't even play oh, his last his ankle. Game. That's why I'm going with the. Uh, I'm gonna go Green, Green Bay. Bay. They just they just that top team. Yeah. Uh. All right. Bet. And then last but not least, Monday night rivalry. That's not real. You missing Tampa Bay and New Orleans? That's Monday. Oh, that's Sunday night. My bad. Oh yeah. Sunday night. Uh. Is this a rivalry? Yeah. I don't think the New Orleans Saints can hang with Tampa Bay though. Me either. Not with. I think when they had Jameis, they could. But. Yeah. I don't. I just don't see it. I'm gonna pick the Bucks. Is I'm picking the Bucks. Yeah, I'm picking the Bucks. Brady is a dog. Seven hundred TDs, MVP. And then you got a, you definitely got another rival, Vikings Bears. And look, I would be like easy Vikings, right? But do we really pick the Vikings? I will pick the Vikings. I think they can go out there and beat the Bears. I'm gonna pick the Vikings just cause. But just watch, bro. Just watch. And I was rooting for the Bears last week against uh Green Bay. Mm-hmm. Sorry, Bears fan. I got to pick the Vikings, man. I'm going to go with the Vikings, too. I know it's been a tough year for a Bears to be a Bears fan. Same with us. But Dang. Vikings, watch y'all go and do what y'all always do. Just watch. Oop. Yeah, I'm going to pick the... Uh... Come on, what am I talking about? We got to talk about our Super Bowl pick next week. Not, not Super Bowl pick, but... No, I'll be know. happy when we don't have to do NFL picks no more, y'all. My team not good. Oh, uh, <laughs> no, you can't be that way. My team not good no more, so now I'm like, all right, for wow, real, Wow, it's crazy. Go, y'all go watch the podcast before this one. Nah, for real. This is real. what y'all do. For real, I'm always going to be a fan. What are you talking about? I'm not saying. I'm just saying it's okay to be a little discouraged that your team is actually not that good and have a million niggas on the COVID list. I don't have to have the same energy, Terrell. The Rams, you know, we picked the Rams to win. They just put seven people on that list. The Seahawks might go out there and win that game. All I'm saying is it's okay to not be so excited about your team, especially when you're a Washington football team fan. I'm always going to be a football team fan. But, I mean, completely. to be completely honest, the Washington Post shit. Oh, no bullshit. It's like, Exhausting. you know what? We mentally might not even show up. We only had 11 players showed up. They're going to play special teams, offense, defense. Uh-huh. We had Kendall Hinton out there throwing passes last year. Right. They want me strapped up. Nigga putting his shoulder pads on. Uh, uh, I played in college. Back up third string. He said, I just got to get out there and stand around. <laughs> <laughs> you in the NFL, nigga. There ain't no standing around. All right, bet. But, yeah, those are NFL picks. Turn up. Happy Friday. Y'all enjoy y'all Friday if you listen to this in the morning. Hope you had a good Friday if you listen to this. Shout out to the first-time listeners. If 100%. You just check this out. Turn up, man. And your boy going out of town. But I'll be back next week for the, for the podcast. Yeah, how dope. Terrell's going out of town. Uh, you want to say where you going? Yeah, going to the Dominican Republic. Shout out to all of our listeners that's, that's in the Dominican Re- Republic. My girl's Dominican. And so, you know, he's doing a little, a little, little end-of-the-year getaway. Girl is Dominican. <laughs> uh. 
But yeah, we're doing like a little weekend. It's like a little weekend thing. So uh, yeah. we're going to be there from whenever to the day we come back to do the podcast. So I had some some details on my stay for y'all. That's dope, man. I'm still... I haven't been on a trip. This nigga has been to Miami. I tried to get the nigga to go with me. He won't go. He asked me two days before. You, uh, hey, we everybody who listen to this, go to Miami in two days. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but he going to Miami. He's going to D, uh, DR, which I think is dope. I'm going to be here. I went, oh, yeah, went to New Jersey. I mean, you didn't really go to New Jersey. You went to a place in New Jersey. I'm going to be here. I'm going to try to get some vlogging done. I hope we can do like a when you and DR vlogging. Hopefully I have some shit going yeah, on. Yeah, that'll be nice. For that. For and sure. if we have another vlog that should be going up. Yeah, it's up. Yeah. Terrell, up did, now. Terrell has done his own little vlog, which is dope. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I, I told Terrence I'm, kinda... I'm, the, I'm the Cordero Patterson of, of Mally Bros right now. He thinks he's Cordero Patterson, but he don't know I put in that good work over the years. I, sh- I deserve to some of the bitch. I got these Adrian Peterson years behind me. <laughs> How the fuck he think them four and ten seasons we did when he was at Best Buy? <laughs> I had 150 yards a game. <laughs> <laughs> Funny as shit, but all right, bet. We getting out of here. Man. Happy Friday. Mally Rose Podcast. Hold on. Thank you for tuning in. Yes, sir. Christmas next week. I can't wait. Right? I can't get wait to get gifts. these gifts off, man. 100. Santa Claus is coming with. <laughs>